Hello and welcome to my full condensed coverage of the official Gran Turismo Sport public unveiling event. Now, the event itself covered a seven hour period, so we're going to condense that right down into this video. Now, I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to give my initial thoughts on Gran Turismo Sport, having had three separate occasions to play the game throughout the day using both a wheel and controller, so a pretty good all-round balanced view. And then I'm going to cut to the man himself, Kaz, talking about some of the new features of the game, obviously again condensed right down, and then we're going to discuss some of the Q&A section questions which he answered, and then we will finally cut to the last leg of an official racing event between Japanese and American competitors including some of the best drivers in the world on Gran Turismo. So first of all, my thoughts on GT Sport having played it. As I said, I played it with both the controller and wheel. I do not like using wheels, I don't usually use them, so this was a first for me to use the Logitech wheel, I believe it was. I used it twice throughout the course of the day in wheel setup mode. I used it in a solo event in one of the pods that you could see in this video driving a Toyota TS30 hybrid around the Nuremberg ring. So, what are my thoughts? Well, as far as graphics, GT6 already set the bar really high. The graphics are fantastic. It pushes the PS3 about as far as it can go. So, to be completely honest, there wasn't a huge difference that I could see between the graphics of the cars. They were better, but not infinitely so, because GT6 is already very good. The differences that I did note, though, were that stuff like the interior view had more of a feeling of quality. For instance, you could see the reflection of the dashboard on the windscreen in sunny weather, for instance, as other games now have as well. Other things such as the textures of the car, the interior especially, but also the exterior, the reflections of the car, the way the light falls on it is slightly different, the tracks themselves look better, the textures are better, and considering that the game is only 50% complete, we were essentially playing a prologue version. And that being said, it felt very good. We don't really know what the other 50% of the game is that they haven't finished yet, but based on what I experienced, it should be good. Now, as far as how the game feels, performance-wise, handling-wise, with a wheel, it kind of offset my view because I'm not used to it. I don't really know how to quantify that compared to the reviews that I would usually do because I just don't use a wheel. So thankfully, I also had the opportunity to use a controller setup and had the opportunity to drive both the Bugatti and Hyundai Vision GT cars as well as a Corvette C7R race car. Now, I'm not going to go into full in-depth reviews because this video will last over a day if I did. But, suffice to say, the Bugatti is very impressive, it handles far better than the Veyron, but overall the handling physics are certainly different on GT Sport. The cars don't actually feel as OP, because I was expecting both the Bugatti and Hyundai to feel insanely fast, possibly even Tomahawk level, in terms of how OP they are. Not that fast, of course, but that hard to beat. Now, they don't. At all. And there is a notable drop in the capability of lap times on GT Sport. Even the best drivers who are currently playing the game, who you'll see driving later on in this video, were only running laps of the Nuremberg Ring in around 6 minutes and 50 seconds, which is realistic. They were driving in GT class machines running around 647, 648 laps, and that's exactly what it should be. That is realistic to real life. So as far as realism, I would say GT Sport is superior to GT6. It has a slight feeling of project cars to its handling. The cars feel a little bit more weighty. The grip is a little bit easier to lose, especially in something like a Corvette C7R. But overall, I liked the handling. It wasn't overly realistic. It wasn't necessarily quite as challenging as project cars, but it was definitely more realistic than GT6, or as far as I'm concerned, GT has ever been before. It was fun. It looked fantastic, and the new cars that I had the opportunity to drive felt really good. So that's it overall for my rough overall thoughts. Now let's hand it over to the man himself to discuss some of the new features.
、えー、とこれからですねあの昨日メディアの皆さんに対して行ったプレゼンテーションを皆さんにも、えー、行いたいと思います。Okay, so I want to take the time here to、uh, actually give you guys the same、uh, presentation that we gave to the media yesterday. And I'll try to keep this short because、uh, you guys probably know about, more about GT than we do. <laughs> so, getting started. えー、と今回のグランツリスも、えー、僕らが、えー、気をつけていることはとにかくクオリティです。So in this edition of Grand Turismo,、uh, what we are really really focusing on is、uh, quality. 皆さんが今日ご覧になっていただいたコードはまだせそうですね品質でいうと 50% ぐらいのものですけれどももっともっと、えー、高めていきます。So the code that you actually saw here on the venue, at the venue today is actually only at 50% or so in terms of quality. Uh, so, we'll be working on it to really、uh, fine tune it、uh, by, the end of, or by the time of release.、はいえーねえー、so, the cars are actually divided into four different categories.、えーねまあね、so, in order to,、uh, to enable the sport part of the game, Uh, the cars were organized into 40 different categories of similar、uh, properties.、えっと N N N N N、so, in the group N class on the bottom there,、uh, that class will involve、uh, N500 with 500 horsepower, N300, N200, and so on. グランツリスモの特徴ですけれども、まあ、リアルなレーシングカーに加えてこういったバーチャルなレーシングカー、まあ、ファンタジーなレーシングカーも一体となって存在する世界です。So this is、uh, one character of Grand Turismo, but、uh, we have fantasy racing cars、uh, racing alongside real life racing cars.、Uh, so the scene looks like something like this. はい、これはインテリアビューですね。Uh, this is some of the interview reviews. すべての車はこういったインテリアビューを持っています。Cars, uh, in the, the えー、トラックです。In terms of tracks, 今回初登場になったハーフマイルのオーバルトラック。For the first time, we're introducing a half mile oval track. えー、とおそらく皆さんもハーフマイルを走るの初めてだったと思うんですけれどもあの思ったより面白かったんじゃないでしょうか。それから東京の首都高速ですね。And then we have the Tokyo Expressway. えー、それからまだ名前は決めていませんがダートトラックがグランツスムに帰ってきます。And I haven't,、uh, we haven't decided on the name yet, but we will have dirt tracks returning to Gran Turismo. I think、uh, you know, driving sideways on a, on a wide dirt road is one of the attractions in Gran Turismo in the past,、uh, so we would like to bring that into Gran Turismo Sport as well. トータルでは137台のスーパープレミアムモデルそれから19ロケーション27レイアウトのコースを収録しますそれでは137レイアウトのコースを収録しますそれでは137レイアウトのコースを収録しますスーパープレミアムと言ったのはかつてのプレミアムよりもさらに上だからですね And the reason why I call it super premium is because it's actually Even higher in quality than the premium models we had in the previous editions.、はいえー uh, in terms of features,、えー、to, Grand Turismo 1が登場して以来、まあ、レースゲームジャンルというのは、えー、それほど大きな変化がなくこれまで、えー、来たと思います。I think since the release of Grand Turismo 1,、uh, the race genre actually hasn't evolved very much over the years. えー、そのスタンダードをもう一回、えー、塗り替えてみたいと思いました that,、uh, 
これがフィーチャーのリストですけれどもあの皆さんが見慣れているもの見慣れていないもの両方あると思います This is some of the features list, and I think you'll recognize some things here and then not recognize some others. And I'll go through each one of these.、えーね、This is pretty obvious.、はい、This is pretty obvious. This is pretty obvious. This is pretty obvious. So, this is the part that we used to call GT mode,、uh, now dubbed the campaign mode. Campaign mode is the first beginner school. This is the Grand Tourism mode. プレイするプレイヤー、あるいは初めてレーシングゲームをするプレイヤーのために作りました。So the beginner school section、uh, is really geared towards first time players to Gran Turismo and also、uh, you know, first time、uh, players、uh, really racing in a racing genre game.、えー、長年グランツリスモをプレイされている皆さんにとっては退屈なゲームモードかもしれませんが、このジャンルのゲームが今後も発展していくためには必要なゲームモードなんですね。And for you know, people who have played、uh, you know, Gran Turismo over the years,、uh, like you guys,、um, you know, this might be a really boring section of the game. But in order to expand the,、uh, the world of Gran Turismo into the future,、uh, this is something that you know, we really need to、uh, cater to the beginners. And so, the circuit experience. これは、まあ、グランドリスもたくさんのコースが入るのはいいんですけれども、それぞれのコースをちゃんと覚える機会というのは、実はありそうでなかったんですね。So, next is the circuit experience section. And though Gran Turismo has a lot of tracks included in the game, there often there wasn't enough time to really learn the details of every track、um, with, uh, in the game. Hi, Mission Challenge is this, this is the GT mode to it, it is the one that is the one t is the one that 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 is the o n The mission challenge、uh, is something that we used to call the mission mode.、Uh, again, here you'll see a, a lot of different challenges you can take on,、uh, including time trials and races in, in、uh, different situations. So, we have a new racing etiquette, and we have a new FIA to the championship. We have a new FIA to the championship. We have a new FIA to the championship. We have a new FIA to the c h a m p i リアルなモータースポーツと同様のスポーツマンシップあるいはマナーを身につけるために作りました And the new racing etiquette section because now we have our partnership with the FIA and what we're doing is really a real motorsport environment we need to have everyone learn the sportsmanship and the manners you need to actually race fairly on the track まとめるとこんな感じですね。全部で117のイベントが収録されています。So to wrap, it looks something like this.、Uh, we have a total of 117 events、uh, in the game. はい、ブランドセントラル、見慣れない名前ですけれども、これはかつてカーディラシップと呼んでいたものです。ブランドセントラル、you might not recognize the name, but this is a section that we used to call car dealerships before. 僕がグランツイスモバンを作った時にどんな気持ちでカーディーラーというものをビデオゲームに存在させたのかっていうことをまあもう一度思い出してみたんですね。So I kind of looked back to the time when I developed Grand Turismo 1、uh, and looked at you know, why I decided to put a car dealership inside the game in the first place. ですからそういった本来の初心に帰ってついついカーディーラーシップってゲームを進める上で単に車を買いに行く場所だっていうふうに。思いがちですよねでそれを元の本来のグランドセスモ1の時に考えていたものに戻そうと思いました。そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、そういうカーディーラーシップは、は、これまで通りショールームがあります。So, I mean, getting into the details,、uh, there is a showroom like we've had in the past. So, I mean, getting into the details,、uh, there is a showroom like we've had in the past. So, I mean, getting into the details,、uh, there is a showroom like we've had in the past. 
you know, car manufacturers around the world, they actually produce a lot of videos uh, throughout the year, high quality videos that go up on YouTube or, or introduced on their websites. And we're also uh, rebuilding the museum system uh, from scratch again. And it says, uh, you know, giving depth and color to their history. これまでもグランツリスモにはミュージアムフィーチャー入っていたんですね。でもっぱらえ、自動車の歴史が1枚の写真と had a museum feature in the game before uh, where we had one uh, image with a caption uh, describing the history from a particular automobile manufacturer. 今回はその自動車史に加えてじゃあ自動車その自動車が生まれた時 え、その他の世の中では一体何が起きていたのか。例えばアートの世界では何が起きていたのか、音楽の世界では何が起きていたのか、え、そういったことも同時に扱うようにしました。So this time around, uh, in addition to the bit of history about a uh, car manufacturer, uh, for example, when this particular car was born, what was going on in the world other than in the world of cars, in art, in music, in society? はい、続いてスポーツモードです。クリーンアンティスポーツモード。もうすでにご覧になっていただいてますよね、今日の。And so we've been working on this project over the last 3 years with the FIA. えっと、2つのフラッグシップとなるチャンピオンシップがあります。1つがネーションズカップ、もう1つがマニュファクチャラファンカップです。So we have two flagship championships uh, in here, which is one is the Nations Cup and one is the Manufacturer Fan Cup. え、自分はえ、メルセデスが好きだからメルセデスの代表だとか、ま、決めるのは皆さんです。So for example, um, maybe your dad drives a Peugeot and always has driven a Peugeot, so you select the Peugeot. Or if you just like Mercedes, uh, you would select Mercedes as your favorite brand. So And then that player would then represent that manufacturer in the manufacturer's fan club series. Nations Cup no So the selection method for the Nations Cup? え、大きく世界を3つのタイムゾーンに分けてます。that world is going to be divided uh, roughly into three general time zones. America region, Nambuka America. So the Americas will involve North and South America. So EU, Mid East, Africa region. So we have the EU, Mid East, and, uh, and the Africa region. So Asia, Oceania region. And then you have the Asia, Oceania region. まあ、なぜタイムゾーンで分かるかというと、まあ、同時にレースする必要があるので、同じタイムゾーンじゃないと同じようにレースできないんですね。時間を合わせることができない。So and the, the reason why we divide this into time zones is that uh, you you need to have uh, opponents that you can race each other at the same time that you're playing the game. Um, so it has to be divided into these time zones where uh, everyone will be together. で、一番下のレベルというのはこれはオンラインで え、毎週行われているレース。そのえ、トップランクのプレイヤーがそれぞれのリージョンファイナルに進みます。So the races you see there on the bottom are the races that are happening uh, every week and the top uh, ranking players from those races will uh, move on to the uh, semifinal events. で、それぞれのリージョンファイナルを勝ち抜くと最終的にワールドファイナルに進みます。Oh, sorry, those are regional final events in which the winners from the regional finals will then go on to the world final. Region final is live event, real event. And the events that are from the regional uh, events and up are actually uh, live events like the one we have here today. Going on to the manufacturer's fan cup. え、マニファクチャラファンカップの選抜構造というのは、それぞれの先ほど申し上げた3つのタイムゾーンの例えばトヨタを代表するドライバー、え、
トップの1人ずつ合計3人がいきなりワールドファイナルに進みます。So, in the manufacturer's fat cup, the selection method is a little bit different, where top drivers from each of the time zones、uh, are selected、uh, and immediately go on to the world finals. 3人がトヨタ代表チームになるということです。So, of those three regions, we'll have a team of three、uh, total representatives, if you, as the example here in the shows. And it's possible that、uh, we might get a fourth driver,、uh, an actual professional driver from each of the manufacturers to participate in the event. And that representative team of those manufacturers will race as a team、uh, in the world final.、はいねえー、so, this is the project that we have going on with the FIA、uh, that's in addition to the championship. あるいはオンラインでレースをプレイすることで一定の基準を満たせば、えー、本物のレースライセンスと同等の効果を持つライセンスが得られるというプログラムです。So, and what this entails is that if you play Grand Prismo, play online for a while and clear a certain level of standards and prerequisites,、uh, you're actually entitled to get a, a, a racing license that is, has the same Type of power as a real world motorsports license. I have a lot of sports license. I have a lot of sports license. I have a lot of sports license. And I myself have、uh, you know, gone out and, and, and acquired a motorsports license. But you know, acquiring a motorsports license is actually fairly、uh, complex and also takes a lot of time and money to do. あともう一つの問題は、全世界で今200ぐらいのオートモビルクラブがありますが、実はそれぞれのオートモビルクラブによって発行しているライセンスの種類って違っていて、その基準というのは実はさまざまたくさんあるんですね。統一されていないんです。And the other problem is, you know, there are about 200 or more、uh, automobile clubs around the world、uh, that issue motorsport licenses. But the, license, the standards for each of those licenses are actually very different from country to country. So, again, another intent here is that we want to create a global standard to start introducing people into motorsports. こういったプログラムをやることで、今回僕らは、えー、バーチャルなスポーツ、モータースポーツを始めるわけですけれども、同時にリアルなモータースポーツへ向かう人たちの数を増やしたいと思います。So, by doing a program like this, obviously we're starting an, an e-sports program, a virtual sport, but we want to also increase the number of people going into real-world motorsports as well. これがですね、今日この瞬間に参加を表明していただいているオートモビルクラブです。So this is a list of、uh, automobile clubs around the world that have, as of today, announced their、uh, intent to participate in the program. おそらくローンチの時点ではもっとこの数は増えているでしょう。そして3年後にはもっと増えているでしょう。I think、uh, at launch.、Uh, We'll probably have more, manif- or more countries added to this list as well. And three years down the line, I think there is going to be even more、uh, countries or automobile clubs in, those, in different countries participating in the program. So,、uh, the UK has already announced their、uh, intent to participate in the program,、uh, and countries like、uh, China and India, where the motorsport industry is actually really growing now,、uh, those countries, I think,、uh, will be very active in the program. Hi,、はい、social features. Going into social features. This is my profile. 
So this is the my profile screen. まあ自分自身が今ゲームでどういったステータスにあるのか、どこまでゲームをクリアしたのか、そういったことが確認できる画面です。で、この画面は他のプレイヤーからも見えます。同じように他のプレイヤーのこういった画面を見ることもできる。それからタイムのリバリーエディターがやっと入りました。And this is the delivery editor that everyone's been waiting for. まあ皆さんが想像しているとおりのものですね。Yeah, it's pretty much、uh, what you would imagine that delivery is for. ここにクレマを配置することができる。So,、uh, as long as the space allows, you can place multiple cars into the photograph、um, and set whether or not you have the lights on,、uh, the direction where the steering wheel is turned,、um, and all these different settings are possible for each of the cars.、はい、11月の中旬にほぼ全世界で同時に発売されます。So, in mid November,、uh, it's going to be pretty much a、uh, worldwide release. プロダクトラインナップ、これはヨーロッパ地域ですね。And the product line up here, this is for the European region. あの一番右側はですね、茶色ではなくて金色です。And the one on the far right,、uh, it's not brown like it appears on the monitor here, it's really gold. Just one more announcement before I, I think、uh, I'm afraid, Tom, we're going to call on you again if it's all right because there's been a request for the competitors from yesterday's、um, Nations Cup and Manufacturers Fans Cup.、Um, we have、uh, the Japanese competitors and the USA competitors who have not flown back yet home yet, so they're still here. So they're going to have a little shootout after this.、Uh, but before that, ladies and gentlemen, the guys from Polyphony, big round of applause for all their efforts. Something, something that you don't get to,、uh, to do too often.、Uh, Yamauchi san was very keen that you'd be allowed to ask your questions. So we've got some microphones. So if you put your hand up if you have a question for Kaz, there's one down here first of all. Let's take this one.、Uh, so if you can just、uh, say hello, say who you are, probably give your PSN ID because they may recognize it if you're, if you're any good.、Um, and、uh, yeah, and ask your question. There's、uh, another microphone over there, so put your hand up、uh, if you need it. But let's start with the first question, please. Now, due to memory card constraints, I was not able to record the QA session which Kaz had with the audience. I was, however, able to note down the questions and the answers that he gave. And there were nine primary questions, so we will run through those now. The first question was Will Gran Turismo Sport support the use of PlayStation 3 spec racing steering wheels? And the answer was no. And the reason being that it requires new hardware to be able to be compatible with the PS4 and GT Sport. And due to the fact that Polyphony do not make that kind of hardware, those who do want to use a wheel will have to get a new one, basically. The second question is Will TVR be featured based on? The issues that they've had with swapping hands recently. The answer was at the moment they are not going to be, primarily because Polyphony don't really know who to contact as far as getting them on the game. So enjoy TVR on GT6 while you can. Question number three was Is Gran Turismo Sport, in Kaz's opinion, of course, the best that Gran Turismo can currently be? Is it the best game that it could possibly be? Well, he said that that's difficult to quantify, of course, because different people think different things. But for him, it was the happiest that he has been with a Gran Turismo game since Gran Turismo 1. And I think that sounds pretty cool, personally. Question four was the Porsche contingency. Will we see Porsche featured, not necessarily just on GT Sport, but on Gran Turismo at a future time? Kaz's answer to that was that he would love. To see Porsches on the game, and they are ready and willing to include them 
whenever Porsche would see fit. Obviously licensing issues with other games would come into play, but as far as Kaz is concerned, he would love to have them. The fifth question was, will Gran Turismo Sport have a damage physics engine, and will it be more or less in-depth than existing Gran Turismo games? Kaz said that it will have damage physics, but damage physics and renderings have never been as important to him on any of the games as the driving experience itself. To him, damage isn't really that interesting. Question number six was, will there be more FIA licensed official race cars, such as WRC machines, featured on Gran Turismo Sport due to the FIA partnership? His answer was that at the moment there are none, but that that is, of course, a possibility for the future. Question number seven was, will there be DLC available for Gran Turismo Sport, either free or paid. Kaz said that there is none currently confirmed, but that is possible and he would like to see that happen, both in free and DLC pack form. Question number eight was, will some of the classic and loved racetracks of Gran Turismo's past return? Not necessarily, again, just to GT Sport, but to GT in general. Well, he considers Gran Turismo Sport to be GT7, and those are Kaz's words himself. He said that if they went back and renamed GT Sport, as far as he's concerned, it could have been renamed GT7 due to the depth of features on the game. As far as the classic tracks returning, he said that that is a possibility. That's not a certainty at the moment, but it is a possibility. And question number nine, the final question of the Q&A session, was... Is there any news, confirmation, denial, etc. regarding a possible tourist trophy to, or some element at least, of motorbikes being featured within Polyphony's wheelhouse, such as with Gran Turismo HD, which featured both? Again, Kaz mentioned that he's been asked this question a lot, which he has, of course, and he said that it's not outside the realms of possibility, but at the moment, he just can't say either way because, of course, they're focusing on GT Sport. So that was it overall for the Q&A session. It wasn't a particularly long one. And overall, as far as my final thoughts for GT Sport, obviously, we only got to play what is essentially a demo, a prologue, the beta, in effect. So we can't experience the full extent or depth of the game at the moment. The real question is, would I recommend the game when it's released in November? Well, I would say yes and no. And the reason why I would say yes and no is because if you already own a PS4, then I would recommend getting this game. Because if we've only seen half of what it's capable of, I would say that it has good things to come. You will enjoy it if you're a fan of Gran Turismo, even though it's not as big as previous Gran Turismo games. However, if you do not own a PS4, I would not recommend buying a PS4 purely to play GT Sport. And the reason why I would say that is not because it's a bad game by any stretch, because it's certainly not. The reason why I would say that is purely because I haven't seen enough of the game, nobody has in fact, to really give a definitive answer for that. I'm sure it will be great, but we just haven't seen it all yet. So, although I would love to recommend getting a PS4 just for this game, we just haven't seen enough to be able to say that. From what I have seen, though, I will certainly be getting it because I already have the PS4, and as I said, if you do already have that console, then I'd definitely recommend getting the game. Otherwise, it's just a lot of money to shell out for what might be good. But, overall, that's it for my overall highlights and impressions of GT Sport, and we will close out this video with some footage from the eighth and final race of the day, which was a race around the Nuremberg Ring between some of the best drivers in the world. Jordan Greer, Greer down into sixth place in the space of about four or five corners. This is incredible to Nietzsche, also trying to get Tom Boyashi as well. And looks like third place could be under threat for Takahashi. 
absolutely incredible and that looks like Fernando Fraser who's wide it is Fernando Fraser from the second place has now been demoted down into fourth place just incredible so it is first second third and fourth Martins from Takahashi from Tomboyashi from Tanishi from Greer from Yamada from Fernando Fraser from Melvin Abrams from David Ramsey from Nist of Stevenson. What an incredible final race this has turned out to be. Here we are with Ben and Laser looking so confident within this race, but unfortunately doesn't look like she will do exactly what she was hoping to into the left hander. Looks like Pedro Martins has got this race sewn up and won, but who is going to get second, third, or even fourth? Takahashi just leads from Tomboy after you can say for them with a cigarette paper's width. Takahashi in the Ferrari. With Tanishi, just oh, sorry, in the Alfa Romeo, I should say Takahashi is in from the Corvette, from the Ferrari of Tanishi. So three different manufacturers occupying three different positions. And Tanishi san is doing a very, very competent job. Meanwhile, further back, Yamada's coming to play now as well. So they're onto the back straight. This is going to be a slipstreaming battle for second place. Who is going to get the spoils down towards the final part of the lap? You can call it because I certainly can't. Tom Boy actually gets himself ahead of Takahashi, but for how long? Because here comes Yanichi as well. Tanichi up the inside. So, oh my goodness, this is too exciting for words. Almost four wide. Incredible for second place. Takahashi's up into second from Tom Boy from Tanichi from Yamada. This is incredible. Who's it going to be for second place into the right hander? Oh, ten what a shame there for Tanichi. He's out of this race. Takahashi holds on to second. Tom Boyashi in third. Martin takes the flag though. Pedro Martins takes the victory from Tom Boyashi from Yamada. Yamada gets it on the line. Oh, and Tom Boyashi gets second place. Incredible. Just an incredible final race. That was absolutely fantastic.